at the heart of it, a lot of your stuff's around education, Don. Absolutely. And before we dive all the way deep into the rabbit hole, what is Fork's achievement? Talking about words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So faux achievement um, is is fake achievement. So, so when you go through the motions, you know, w- when you're in school and you just kind of uh, did what was in front of you, you did the stuff, but you didn't concentrate, you didn't particularly put much effort into it, or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you just did enough to mm-hmm. get by. And yep. you didn't truly learn, learn the lesson. The, 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 the classic is sort of, I took the test and I forgot it five minutes later. That's <laughs> faux achievement, you know. It, I was actually pretty good at school. Um, yeah. But I don't think I learned as much as I could have. I know that it was not uh, the kind of energizing, fulfilling thing that I knew learning could be. Uh, because in my family, we used to go out, go to museums, and we would go places, and we would like really, you know, learn a lot from mm. what, we're, what we were doing. And I mm-hmm. realized when I would do museums in school, like you know, you could do the field trip to the museum, yep. and it's like they made museums boring. And <laughs> at some point, I was like, yeah. man, that's so weird. Because on the one hand, I grew up like enjoying museums, and then in school, it was like. These are the, this is just boring and, and terrible. Yeah. So uh, there, there's this real difference, disconnect between how our supposedly learning institutions are working and, and mm. how learning actually is this enjoyment and it's exciting and it's, in, you know, your enthusiasms. It doesn't mean it's not hard work. It is. Mm-hmm. And you can actually be really challenged by it in a lot, in, in all your dimensions, you know. But when you have a system that makes it boring, that, that puts it into a way that, that is, uh, takes the life out of it, mm. then that's, that's a different thing. And, and you, you are learning something because as long as you're alive, you're learning. Mm. But when you learn to be depressed or anxious, or you, know, you learn that life is a certain, is not the enthusiasm of life, mm. is not imbued in everything, then you learn that that's not how life is. Um, and so we learn these lessons of how not to show up fully, how to, how not to be truly present to the moment or to what's really enjoyable about a museum, for instance, um, is you learn something else. And, and, and that's kind of what my work is really focused at. And faux achievement is that level of doing that where you look successful from the outside, mm. but you haven't really tuned in and learned what you truly could out of that and whatever that experience was, whether it was a lesson or a museum or the library or, or something else. So I, um, for those that are watching the YouTube video, you can see the grimace on my face. <laughs> for those that are tuning into the audio, you can't. And the reason that exists is because at the risk of polarizing this podcast from the outset, um, yeah, I touch would resonate so deeply with what you shared. Like I was academically at school, perceived to be quite apt um and yet i look back and there are definitely certain subjects where yeah i absolutely loved what i was learning and there was like a real thirst for but there was other subjects which i still did well at and i look back Mm -hmm. and i go no that was just me just you know just (laughs) exactly what you said learn what you need to for just right now and then 20 minutes Mm -hmm. later it's gone and It's, it was even, then that went from all the levels. It went from early on, even all the way through to university. There were certain yep. subjects that, yeah, like you just, I literally just crammed in before exams. And then as soon as exams were done, I crammed them out as fast as I could yeah, <laughs> as yeah, well, yeah, it seems. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I know some people were probably challenged by that because they're, you know, they're tuning in, they're like, you know, academics didn't come to me that naturally and, you know, how... Uh, privileged yeah. of you to even suggest that, but I oh, think absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like that, I said, that, at the risk of being polarizing. Yeah, sorry, mm-hmm. go on. Yep, I, I think I think that's one thing you have to appreciate, though, is that is that there is so so um, we focus on people who drop out of school, and and that's a, mm. that's not that 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 can that's that represents a tragedy usually, um, mm-hmm. unless they're rising out of school into something better, but usually it's not. Um, but when we yeah, also focus it. on kids, it, it, sometimes it turns it, out afterwards rarely, that they yeah. rose into something. But at the time, it's yeah. like you said, it's it's a collective social stigmatized tragedy. Yeah, exactly. And th- and then you have the people who who uh, 
did stayed in school but didn't mm. do well so they were underachieving so you have the mm -hmm. dropouts you have the underachievers and those are both tragedies mm -hmm. and then you have the faux achievers the ones like us who faked mm -hmm. our way through it we got some of the rewards and and truly the privileges that accrued from having that that diploma or that you know whatever it was the degree we mm -hmm. had that on our wall and mm -hmm. we got some privilege from that um, but that's no less a tragedy than the others because they all represent the same fundamental problem and that's the disengagement from learning itself which is i would argue disengagement from life itself only at smaller degrees and different degrees it's the same phenomenon you're disengaging from something and when you disengage you pull back from it and you you deny the lessons that are possible to learn in that situation uh, or, or you you learn a different lesson like i said do anytime you're alive you're learning but you you when your when your brain goes into survival mode instead of thrival mode so that survival mode is like okay i got to protect myself well one of the ways i can protect myself when i'm really really smart is i can say i don't really put much value on this so i'm just going to skim it i'm going to cram it in and let it go you mm. know that's no less tragic than the others because it represents some level of disengagement and what we were successful at was mm. learning how not to be fully connected fully to life engaged. in that moment yeah to not be fully mm. engaged in that moment so 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 it's no less a tragedy it's just that that our society supports our tragedy better than it does the others you know the we get ones. rewards despite that mm. and some the... people there are some people who just flat out succeed in that system and 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 enjoy it so the, uh, there is the full spectrum there are those who mm -hmm. were rejected by the system and there are those who succeeded in the system like fully succeeded and became you know realized within their because they just happen to align with it so mm -hmm. the full spectrum is there and it's just a matter of like can we shift it and my work is really can we shift it to that place where we really help children become attuned to what their life is independent of their circumstances and their their the things in their life that you know are, are going on nonetheless but how do you tune them into the great things and the enthusiasm of learning itself so